Perception is very powerful. It can influence the way people think without them actually knowing why they think it. Ferrari, in the space of one season, from the end of their disastrous 2020 season to the end of their reinvigorating 2021 season, almost seem like a brand new team with a new outlook and on the outside, the fans also seem to have new and fresh hope in their future as well. But a year on, all of the ingredients are still the same however, but the one that's changed is Carlos Sainz. He's turned things around at Ferrari in more ways than one, but his biggest achievement had nothing to do with what he did in the car, it's what he did to change the hearts and minds of F1 fans out of it. Now, I want to start off by saying that this video really is not about what Carlos Sainz did on the track and the fact that he beat Charles in his first season at Ferrari. There's no doubt that Leclerc is the faster driver and also that on balance, he had way more bad luck that cost him throughout the season. Now, that's not to take away from both of the drivers. Both of them have different skill sets and ultimately both are incredible drivers. What's quite interesting is that when we talk about some of the bad luck that Leclerc had in 2021, people always use that as a negative to try and take away from Carlos. I would actually flip that and say instead of using bad luck for one teammate to diminish another teammate's achievements, why not praise the team itself for having the perfect driver lineup so that when one driver has a bad weekend, whether or not it's their fault or not, the other driver is always there to pick up the pieces and deliver for the team. I mean, think about it. Carlos Sainz had four podiums in 2021, and in each of those races, something always happened to Leclerc. In Monaco, when Leclerc couldn't start the race because the team didn't spot his broken drive shaft, Sainz went on to score his first podium for Ferrari. In Hungary, when Leclerc was just an innocent victim of the Turn 1 chaos, Sainz again scored another podium after Vettel's disqualification. In Russia, when it was actually Leclerc who told the team and made the mistake of staying out, Sainz, who pitted for the Inters quite early on, yet again picked up a podium, seemingly from nowhere. And then in Abu Dhabi, Leclerc did not have his best weekend and got caught out with the timing of the VSC, but yet again, Sainz was there for Ferrari and scored another podium. Pairing, and ultimately, that's why Ferrari finished third in the constructors, even though McLaren definitely had the car to also finish third, but it was Ricardo on their side that let the team down. That's all that I have to say with regards to the actual on-track performances. Leclerc was his usual balance of magic and chaos at times as well that I absolutely love, and Sainz, in the most respectful way possible, was boringly brilliant and proved that his move to Ferrari, at least so far, was a stroke of genius on his part. But again, this video is not about how good they were on the track because I think in the case of Carlos Sainz, what he did for the perception of Ferrari off track totally eclipsed what he was able to achieve for them on track and in the championship. Let's rewind going back just over a year to 2020. That was one of the worst seasons in Ferrari's history which was equally matched by their worst car since 2014. The real start to this was when Ferrari announced that they would drop Sebastian Vettel for 2021. Now this was a big statement because keep in mind that Bonotto had only been the team principal for only one year. And it wasn't as if Seb didn't want to stay, he wanted to continue with Ferrari but in the end, the team felt that their future would be better without Seb. To say that this was met with a negative response would be massively understating it, with fans and understandably Vettel fans in particular feeling frustrated towards Ferrari and in particular Matteo Bonotto. My feeling at the time was very simple. If you give Leclerc a long-term contract, you are sending a very simple message that he is the future of the team. And after the way 2019 ended with the two of them crashing into each other and with so much tension within the team after just one season together, I was one of the people who actually made a video before it was announced saying that I think Seb needed to leave Ferrari because on one side, I think the team moved on from him and found their new star, and on the other, 
I don't really see Seb being able to get the best out of himself when he's up against a young Charger who has the support of the team around him. It was almost a direct copy of what happened to him in 2014 against Ricardo. Either way, this massively unpopular move by Ferrari to drop Seb, which was combined with one of the worst seasons in the team's history, brought about a level of negativity and toxicity from the fans towards Ferrari that I have never seen before in my life. Most of it was also being directed towards Matteo Binotto. We all know about the Binotto clown memes and to even just get a sense of how toxic it got, if you just type in the words Binotto clown on Twitter, most of the tweets that come up are from 2020 and it just shows the tip of the iceberg of what people thought of him and ultimately the team itself. The Bonotto side of things was always a difficult one for me. On one hand, I respected his decision to see that it just wasn't going to work with Seb and Charles, and then to actually have the guts to drop a full-time world champion. But the way he handled it, the things he said, the not-so-subtle tension within the team, and even the fact that Seb then decided to basically slap Ferrari in the face by announcing his move to Aston Martin during Ferrari's 1000th Grand Prix celebration weekend, all of it was just descending into chaos and 2020 really was a year where Ferrari were just racing to get the year over and done with. So, entering 2021, Ferrari were at an all-time low. Of course, the Tifosi will always support them, but as someone who was just quietly observing the general feeling towards Ferrari on social media, there was still a huge amount of animosity towards the team and towards Bonotto. It almost got to the point where I think the fans who were critical of Ferrari and the way they dealt with the Seb situation almost wanted Ferrari to fail in 2021 because it would validate their criticisms of Benotto and prove that he was wrong. Even throughout 2020, there were so many people that were saying that Benotto should be dropped as the team principal. My thoughts were that Ferrari is a massive brand and having a negative image on their Formula 1 team, which is a huge part of their brand, that can't continue to happen. But if the boardroom back Bonotto and the decisions that he makes, he should be given the time to show and prove that he made the right call on where the team should go. If the team don't improve and if there is yet another civil war between the drivers and yet another backlash saga on social media towards Ferrari and Binotto and if the car itself after 2020 continues to be as bad as it was, then I think it would be more than fair to question if Matteo Binotto is actually the right man to take Ferrari forward to where they need to be. This is where Carlos Sainz comes in. Not only did he meet the targets that I'm sure he and Ferrari had before the start of the season, but the way he's shifted the perception of Ferrari in the space of a year with his incredible performances and consistency has been nothing short of sensational. Now, I want to make one thing clear. Ferrari are still massively underperforming relative to where they need to be. This is a team that, even under the budget cap, has no problem spending every penny that they can. This is not an upper midfield team. This is a top team with world-class facilities and their own power unit who have no excuses to not be on the same level as Mercedes and Red Bull. Having said that, you've got to put things into perspective. They are on a recovery project to an extent, and the gains they made in 2021 and the fact that they did finish third in the Constructors, they achieved the maximum that they realistically could have done in 2021. But the part where science comes in is that he has turned out to be a success. He hasn't just come in and done a solid job for a number two, he has got people questioning whether or not with the year now at the team under his belt, if he could maybe potentially beat Leclerc to a title if given the car to do so. He's also changed the image of the Ferrari team and brought back the positivity. With his contribution and with him being such a success, Ferrari have become many people's favourite team to potentially produce the best car in 2022 and at least get back on the track of winning races and maybe even the championship in 2022. His maturity, experience and composure in the car have released a lot of the pressure from the team when they haven't been operating at their best and also Matteo Binotto who was under massive scrutiny going into 2021. And it's actually quite funny that now, where are all of those Bonotto clown memes gone? 
Now, don't get me wrong, and this is a very important point that I want to try and get across. The same problems that we saw in 2020 still persist at the team. Even as a fan watching at home, I get that we don't have the entire picture that the teams do, but when it comes to some of their pit stops, their strategical decisions, and then some of their ridiculous team radio messages that leave me confused, all of those problems are still there. And me personally, I still have questions as to whether or not Bonotto really is the right man to lead the team for not just the next few years, but maybe even the next 5, 10 or 15 years like a Christian Horner or a Toto Wolf. I'm still not the biggest fan of Bonotto and I have my doubts. But if you don't admit and give the man credit that he made the right choice to drop Seb and pick up Carlos Sainz, then you're just hating for the sake of hating. So, whilst I'm not saying by any means that Ferrari are the perfect team from top to bottom, what Sainz has done with his driving ability and with his mentality, he has been so good that he's papered over those cracks. And instead of the fans focusing on what Ferrari are doing so wrong, he's now making the fans think about how Ferrari are improving and how they are the team on the rise to challenge the likes of Red Bull and Mercedes. That's what a world-class driver does. He protects the team and also protects their image with good results, even when the team might not actually be doing a great job. What's also massively underrated is just how he's absorbed the pressure of driving for Ferrari, especially in his circumstances where the entire world is looking at you to prove that leaving McLaren where you were the number one was the right choice and with your boss's job on the line if you don't deliver for him. The way he's coped with all of that pressure has been flawless. Now, as I said, Sainz was the critical piece. If he failed, then the team would have been in an even worse place than they were in 2020. But he didn't. And that's why what he did for Ferrari off the track in putting faith back into the team, reinvigorating them and I'm sure giving the people actually working inside the team more confidence and a better feeling about their future, that's why his biggest win in 2021 was not beating Leclerc or scoring four podiums, it was absorbing the Ferrari pressure, putting himself into that future Ferrari champion conversation, and most importantly, turning the perception of the team around when they were at their absolute lowest in just one season. Well, there you have it, another one of my in-depth analysis videos wrapped up. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments box below. And if you did enjoy this video or have enjoyed some of my other videos on the channel, then don't forget to drop a like and also smash that subscribe button. That would be greatly appreciated and I will see you in the next one.